Welcome to the Coming Apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome. This is the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. And the one thing, I get asked a lot of questions about the last days, but the one question everyone wants to know is how much time do we have left? Or when will the Antichrist appear? Or who is the Antichrist? Well, let's go straight to the word of the Lord to help us understand we are in the age of the Antichrist. We do not know who he is but we do know certain key indicators that will help us understand just how close we are to the rise and the, literally the reigning of the beast. Well, if you go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the scriptures tell us, uh, and, and here's the thing about it. A lot of times when people, when you start to talk about the Antichrist, folks just freak out and say, oh no, you know, are you serious? Give me something else. Well, you're not supposed to be, have any fear at all. The Lord hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. So we need to understand what's happening in these last days to be better prepared and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here's what it says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition." who opposes, exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. There is an hour coming upon the earth when the Antichrist will literally walk into the temple of God and declare that he is God before all those that are worshiping God. Now, First of all, we don't have the third temple has not been built yet. But matter of fact, uh, the Temple Institute in Jerusalem is making a major announcement very soon. And some people think they are going to be setting the date for when they want to begin the process of building the third temple. I can tell you that uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick, who I met in Jerusalem uh, in 2015, I can tell you that he just got back from Turkey where he met with some of the leading Muslim leaders and uh, he went there on a peace mission. I mean, you have to understand he was nearly assassinated in October of 2014 and he went there because they asked him to come on behalf of peace. So he did. It was uh, a quite extraordinary visit and from that, discussion went on about building the temple, or what they call Solomon's Temple. That would be the third temple, rebuilding it. Uh, without this temple, though, according to 2 Thessalonians 2, we will not know who the identity of the Antichrist is. Could he be alive now? I think very well, possibly. Could he be getting in position? Possibly he is. Now, we do not know exactly the time frame, but we're based on other things we're seeing, we know we're living in the age of the Antichrist. Now, an Antichrist spirit is just that. It is anti-Jesus Christ. John said there are many Antichrist spirits that have went into the world. Anyone that is uh, against the gospel of Jesus Christ and fighting the cause of the cross, where Jesus gave his life on the cross to redeem mankind, would be considered an antichrist spirit. There are many of those that have went into the world and many that are operating today. 
but the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the wicked one, the lawless one, the one that will rule the world has not yet arrived on the scene. He will have a uh, sidekick, a false prophet who will help him in their uh, work of deception and to bring glory to themselves. It's truly a situation that's going to develop. Now, we have seen many false prophets and many false Christ. And there's only two times in the Bible that the word son of perdition is used. Jesus called Judas Iscariot. He called him the son of perdition. And of course, we know Judas betrayed him. And that was just to lead Christ to the cross. Uh, the second time is in this chapter, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The son of perdition is used. Uh, there is, let me read on as it says here in the scripture. Remember ye not, verse 5, that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. The Antichrist will, he is the son of perdition. He is the wicked one. He is the one that will try to take over the world and lead the world to follow him. He will be filled with the spirit of darkness, certainly a messenger of Satan. Now, uh, we can look at history and we have to look at the, the most modern day Antichrist, uh, someone who probably was the closest to fit this description uh, that we've ever had, yet he was not the one. And that would have been Adolf Hitler, his Nazi regime in Germany. He literally hypnotized, he mesmerized an entire nation to believe in and to follow through terror, through uh, brutality, uh, and through great persuasion, his char charismatic ways, he, he somehow was able to take an entire nation and convince them that his ideology of eliminating the Jews from the uh, extinguishing them, if he could, off the face of the earth and that national pride of Nazi Germany could one day rule the world. He built an army second to none and his loyal Followers were enormous. He used modern technology like no one else. He's the first political speaker to speak before hundreds of thousands of people using a microphone and speakers in the, cost in the outdoor area. No one had ever done that. So he used modern technology. He used the power of persuasion. He used the demonic spirit that was so convincing that he could fool anyone except the very elect. Now, let me tell you some things that took place. When he was a little boy, about the age of nine, he went into a museum there in his hometown in Austria. As he was going through the museum, he came to a shadow box on the wall, the Spear of Destiny, believed to be the spear used by the Roman soldiers when they pierced Jesus in the side. He was mesmerized by it. He was captivated by it. And he stood there and stared at it. The next day when he got off school, he went back to the museum at 4 o'clock in the afternoon because it was the final hour. It was free. He went in. He went straight to the shadow box and stared at the Spear of Destiny, also known as the Spear of Loganus. He did this day after day. And he would go back periodically. And he started to get involved in the occult satanic uh, manuscripts. He began to look into the dark side and, and he would keep making his visits to the Spear of Destiny. At the age of 13, he says that a black mass came out of the box and entered into him. He constantly 
pursued the occult. Now, he rose to power in Germany. He was thrown in prison even at first from his Nazi, Nazi party. But when he got out, he somehow rose again. And unbelievably, he wound up the Fuhrer uh, by 1933. And in five years, convinced an entire nation to, to get rid of their democracy, their constitution, and adapt all power to him. I mean, are you serious? I mean, I, I, to this day, I still think about that. How did he do this? By what force? By what power was he using? There's no question. He had the spirit of darkness upon him, the demons of hell. He was a modern-day Nephilim who was leading an entire nation toward the gates of damnation, and his entire focus was on extermination of the Jewish people. Now, by 1938, he began. Folks, from 1938 to 1945, a seven-year period, he literally turned the world upside down. He was truly the forerunner to the end-time Antichrist. He not only captivated the German people, but he put fear in the hearts of every major world leader as they watched his propaganda machine uh, and uh, literally just take advantage of people. And while he was in the process of launching a war, invasion of uh, most of Europe, he was systematically starting the process of eliminating Jews from the face of the earth. But he didn't do it immediately. He had already been working on them, taking away some of their rights, rewriting the Constitution, starting to... Uh, take possession of their assets, their, their finances, their businesses, their, their money in the bank, their jobs, their influence. And he started this process of demoralizing them and convincing the rest of the nation that the Jews were a problem. Sound familiar? I think almost the same thing today is happening among Christians. We are being viewed sometimes as a problem. We're offensive because we got a cross on the church, or you wear a necklace with a cross, or you got a Bible on the dashboard, or you got a bumper sticker that says, We love Jesus, or you go, you know, we're beginning to be a problem. Just keep, just keep that in mind as you watch your constitutional rights slowly be changed, policies being adapted uh, toward a, uh, an antichrist spirit. So while these things are going on, Hitler was able to start the process of sending the Jewish people to the concentration camps and the mass murdering. Now, here's the thing about it. The camps were already built. So he built them in advance of the extermination. He already had a vision, and he had been involved in the back breeding, if you will, trying to create this superior race. He used scientists there uh, to help further his cause. He was without question. You know, I, I've thought about many times that if I was living in those days, if I was a preacher in Germany and saw what was happening, I would have been thinking, this guy's got to be the Antichrist. Well, he was an Antichrist. He just wasn't the world leader, the world Antichrist. Well, there's some things have to happen, uh, certainly. Uh, if you'll go with me to the book of Daniel, I want to read to you a very important part of Scripture. Uh, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, the Bible says, it speaks of the abomination of desolation uh, in the word of the Lord. And it says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. There's an abomination of desolation coming. Now, we know that the temple, the first temple was destroyed. And, and uh, we know that happened in 586 B.C. by the Babylonians, in which Nebuchadnezzar and some of the others would, would constantly uh, perform uh, pagan rituals in the temple of God and steal the golden vessels and, and uh, completely desecrate uh, the temple of the Lord. But that was not 
the abomination of desolation that Jesus is talking about. We know the temple would be destroyed a second time uh, in 70 AD by the Roman Empire. And Jesus even prophesied that every stone would be overturned, and it was. But Jesus was asked the question again, Matthew 24, about the signs of the end times. He goes through the entire list of earthquakes and wars, persecutions and sorrows, and then says, but when, and he even says that when, because iniquity abound, the love of many will wax cold, but he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And when this gospel is preached into all the world, into a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. And so we must get the gospel of Jesus Christ to every creature, to every individual, to every nation by preaching the power of the cross, not to cower into the corner because of the, uh, the corruption and the persecution that may be coming upon us. But quite the contrary, we should stand up like soldiers of the cross, wearing the blood-stained banner of Jesus, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, having the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the Lord, your shield of faith to fight off all the fiery darts of the devil. I mean, don't, don't lay down now. This isn't time. Don't go AWOL now, church. This is the time to prepare yourself for the days we're in. Notice what Jesus said, though, in Matthew 24, 15. But when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understandeth. That is Matthew 24, verse 15. Jesus says, when you see this prophecy that Daniel said in Daniel 9, 27, you will literally... It is a major biblical prophecy milestone. And then Paul tells us what is the abomination of desolation in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where we started this broadcast today. Paul even writes this. And then verse 8, I'm in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This day is coming. The temple has not been built, but the plans, the blueprints are drawn. All of the things that are needed for the temple are being prepared, and an antichrist spirit is rising globally around the world. I got another verse for you, though. If you go to Revelation chapter 2, uh, verse 13. When Adolf Hitler did take over the world or started to take over the world and attacking Europe, he sent his armies into Austria to the town that he grew up in, to the very museum where he knew the spear of destiny was on the wall in the shadow box, and he ordered it be brought to him. You see, some world conquerors before him had also had the spear. Constantine, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, others. They believed if they had the spear of destiny, the very spear believed to be used to pierce Christ in the side, that it would give them super occultic power to conquer the world. And so now Hitler had his opportunity. They brought the spear to him and he kept it with him everywhere he went as he was leading Nazi Germany to its destruction. But he did something else. He knew that the altar of Zeus was in Athens, Greece. Now, the altar of Zeus is uh, actually was a place where Christians would be, on this altar was a calf, and they would take Christians and put them inside the belly of the calf, tie them up, shut the door, and then heat the altar. It would heat the calf, and as the Christians inside would begin to scream in agony, the music playing, the people would be dancing around the altar of Zeus, 
hit the, the individual being uh, put to death, their voice would go through the mouth of the calf, and the mouth of the calf had uh, uh, organ pipes in it, and it made a sound, an eerie sound of music, so that the person dying made the sound of the calf wail, and that would just heighten the demonic spirits around this. Can you imagine? Matter of fact, Jesus knows that the archbishop of the church of Pergamos was actually become a martyr on this very spot, on the altar of Zeus. And look what Jesus said in Revelation chapter 2, verse 13. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Now get this. Jesus refers to an archbishop Christian who was sacrificed on the altar of Zeus in Athens, Greece. And he says this is where Satan dwelleth. It's Satan's seat. Guess what Adolf Hitler did? He, when he got in position, he ordered the altar of Zeus to be dis- taken apart, dissembled, brought to Berlin and reestablished, and it's there today inside one of the museums. He brought Satan's seat to Berlin. He had the spear of destiny. He was exterminating the Jews. He was trying, he hated Christianity. He was trying to conquer the world. He was the closest thing to the last day Antichrist that we've ever seen. But my friend, he failed because there was no temple for him to walk in, in Jerusalem, and declare that he was God. He had the Antichrist spirit, but he was the forerunner to the one that's going to come. Now get this, if Hitler had not done what he did to the Jews, there would have been no need for the nation of Israel to be established after World War II. And when Harry Truman, the President of the United States, was brought the documents that were getting ready to be voted upon by the United Nations resolution, they asked him, what should the name of this country be called? He says, what does the Bible say? It shall be called the nation of Israel. Even King David in Psalms 83 refers to the nation of Israel, even though the nation of Israel had never been ever established. The kingdom of Israel had and the kingdom of Judah, but not ever called a nation. Harry Truman then signed and they voted unanimously the entire world that Israel should be established. Jews then started migrating back to Israel exactly as it was prophesied in the book of Ezekiel and other Old Testament prophets that this day would come. None of this would have happened if the forerunner to the Antichrist, Adolf Hitler, if he had not risen to power. Now, now that Israel is established, now that we're uh, getting close to the 70th year of his existence, getting close to the 50th anniversary of Jerusalem being unified, look at the armies that are starting to surround Israel. Look at Iran and the nuclear bomb. Look at the, uh, the hatred, the anti-Semitism that's rising again, not only toward Israel and the Jews, but toward the Christians around the world. Why? Because the Antichrist is about to rise. We're in the age of the Antichrist. And so if you're not saved, I would really say to you right now, I don't know about you, but you don't want to be left behind to face the wrath of God in an unstable world. Instead, give your life to Jesus Christ. Be born again. Be washed in the blood. You can go to my website right now, www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. Go there right now. There's people in the chat room that will help you. I'll be there on Friday nights, and we'll pray with you and lead you to Jesus Christ. You can do this right now. Get in there and do it. Give your life to Christ. Don't let the devil deceive you. He's tricked many people long enough. If you are a, a, a viewer of this televised broadcast, you would like these teachings, you know, you can go watch my YouTube videos. I, I have, look, Paul Begley 34 on YouTube. Help me get 100,000 subscribers. I think the last time I looked at it, it was right at 99,000. Help me get there. Matter of fact, come and watch and learn 
what's going on in the end times. But more importantly, more than anything, give your life to Jesus Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord and understand the age of the Antichrist is here. Now, I'm going to be preaching a, in a, uh, my own conference. I'm hosting a conference in Dallas, Texas, September 12th, 2015, at the K. Hutchison Convention Center, downtown Dallas. It's on, uh, go to my website, get registered. I have 800 seats available, and they're filling up fast. Go ahead, get registered. If I have to, we'll break out more chairs. We get, you get more room. But come on, let's be ready for an all-day event on end-time Bible prophecy. We'll be preaching there. It's called the Texas Explosion Bible Prophecy Conference. And uh, our website has all the information as well as hotel accommodations. Also, at the end of September, I'm going to be preaching a blood moon revival. A blood moon revival. Of course, the fourth blood moon is about to happen. And that will be on September 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th, four nights during the fourth and final blood moon at Tri-State Ministries in Hyman, Pennsylvania. Go to my website, find all the information. And uh, that church has also doubled its sanctuary and is expect, and they're going to be dedicating it during that weekend. Are you serious? We're, I'm saying to you now that time is running out. I'm telling you, you're in the age of the Antichrist. It would not shock me that they would, if they don't start building the temple within three years. And when I asked Yehuda Glick, Rabbi Glick, how long would it take? He said, we could build it in six months. We have everything we need. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you seriously saved? Give your life to Jesus Christ. Get back here next week. Don't miss these broadcasts. I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching the broadcast. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you something. If you'd like to know more about some of our books that we've written, go to our website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I've even got music CDs. I've actually have a couple country gospel music CDs that we recorded that I think you'll really enjoy. I have five books that I've written. This is my newest one, Jerusalem Jihad. Jerusalem Jihad. This has to do about an end time apocalyptic scenario that includes the rebuilding of the temple, also uh, the two witnesses, and uh, it's a powerful presentation, if you will, on how things are starting to come together here in the last days. So again, check out all of our books, uh, CDs, and everything else we have, and your donations are greatly appreciated at our website. God bless you, in Jesus' name.